And I think it's fair to say by definition it cannot work because for everyone that has that thinks they're a smart beta, every smart beta is offset by a dumb beta uh, because the market comes out to zero. And there's no systematic way that any group of investors can consistently beat the market. Jack, tell me what your thoughts are on smart beta or whatever name you want to put to it. Well, the name I would put to it is sheer unadulterated baloney. Uh, you know, beta, as probably your readers and listeners know, is the market risk. And we define beta as 100. And that's the market beta. That's the volatility of it. And uh, so smart beta is getting some extra return over and above the market. Well, people have been trying to use that since the beginning of time. It, it didn't have it had a different name. It was called professional management or a lot of things like that, finding good managers. This is the same thing. And I think it's fair to say by definition it cannot work because for everyone that, has, that thinks they're a smart beta, every smart beta is offset by a dumb beta. Uh, because the market comes out to zero, and there's no systematic way that any group of investors can consistently beat the market. I know all about the Battle of Waterloo, but everybody expected that Britain would lose the war with France, and so British bonds were deeply depressed. And after the Battle of Waterloo, when uh, Wellington and uh, a German general combined to lick Napoleon, uh, Rothschild heard about it, and he got a carrier pigeon and sent the carrier pigeon to London saying, buy all the British bonds, they call them consoles, uh, that you can at these depressed places. He beat everybody else to the punch because this carrier pigeon is going yeah, <laughs> all the way over there. And that's the first example that I can think of that, uh, that said speed was important in executing orders. And this is kind of a trading thing. You can't do that consistently. I know that. But speed is what high-frequency trading is, and we've gone a long way from the carrier pigeon. It's just a wonderful anecdote, partly ap apocryphal. And uh, now speed gets faster and faster and faster. And yes, there are lots of things wrong with high-frequency trading, and they ought to be investing. But the big thing about high-frequency trading is it has taken the costs in these new markets of ours, penny rounding and or even less, used to be, 12 and a half cents uh, and, uh, and up to 35 cents commission per share. And now it's almost zero. And uh, that par that's partly because high frequency trading has taken down the cost of trading to an almost irreducible amount. You know, is it a penny? Is it a half a penny? Uh, but there are a lot of issues there. Is there uh, insider trading? People know where the buying is coming from in these firms. And they're buying before the firms buy, and therefore they're buying the stock at, let's say, forty-two dollars and four cents, uh, and they buy it at forty-two oh four, and then the firm comes in to drive it up to forty-two oh six, and it's only two pennies or maybe a nickel, but multiplied by millions and millions of shares, they can make a lot of money, and they do. We don't know how much money these high-frequency trading firms make, but we ought to know. They ought to be regulated as exchanges one by one. We know that. We ought to wonder how they're going to do when they start doing dark pools. There are many unanswered questions. But the bottom line is it's taken the cost of investing way down. Uh, so for active traders, that's good. The interesting thing is that what does high-frequency trading mean to an indexer who is buying and holding for a lifetime? Nothing. It's all in the short-term trading. You know, it doesn't change the value of a corporate America in, in 2040, and it can't. Uh, so it's all interim stuff that's based on trading. And so if you're a long-term investor, and particularly an index fund investor, it's indifferent to you. And if you're not, well, how do markets work? If you're paying a little more for a stock and somebody's doing some quick trading on the other side, uh, they're getting a little more for it, right? I mean, you're paying more, and they're getting more. The stock market is this closed circuit where there's no way of creating value inside it. The value is created by corporate America's earnings and dividends. So it, when you do that, when you do the high frequency trading, uh, to me the big issue is how much of those pennies are going to the trading firms as compared to the traders. 
because I don't have any way of saying, I don't think anybody does, that uh, if, it, if investor A pays two cents more for a stock than maybe he should have, and the investor B gets two percent, two cents, you know, who really cares? They ought to be able to take care of themselves, these institutions.